Good evening. Hello, good evening. good evening. And greetings to all our viewers and our listeners from the entirety of the continent of Africa and wherever we find ourselves. It's been a long journey being called to share the stage. For some reason, we had a reservation and decided to perhaps be on the backstage. But our forebears, the Pastor Pipins and the likes, said, no, you need to come out, you need to share your experiences, so that those who are coming after you would get to know that things are achievable, goals are reachable. We can do anything so long as we put our hands to it and with the right tools. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to share with you, I call it a synopsis of how we got here, uh, even though we are yet to start. I believe that we haven't started yet. In fact, I haven't started yet. And I haven't arrived yet. The day I arrive is when, you know, they will carry my casket and say, go and meet your maker. Until then, I'm not sure I have arrived and any of us would have arrived. Enough with the intro. Let me ask for your listenership for the next five minutes maximum, we've had all the vibrant talk, we've had all the gingering and engendering speeches from the practicing entrepreneurs, uh, the baby entrepreneurs, the booming entrepreneurs and all that. But I'd want to quickly call your attention to service rendering. There's a word intrapreneurship. How, how many of us have come across it? Intrapreneurship. Okay, just a few. All right. So, whilst all of us cannot start at a goal to be entrepreneurs, there is a theory, there is a philosophy that we can practice and imbibe the entrepreneurial knowledge while working for other people. All right. Mine isn't any different from those who have spoken earlier. Uh, the MC indicated that with the profile mentioned, you may be thinking of a certain old man. I think I'm old. <laughs> uh, though not that old. But the point is, take notes. You don't need to turn 40. You don't, in fact, you don't need to reach any age to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. In Ghana, we perhaps in Ghana and Africa, you get to realize that, no, you are a kid. There are some proverbs that say that um, as a kid, you are not even supposed to sit amongst the community of adults, uh, amongst the gathering of adults until, yeah, you've learned to even wash your hands well. A certain I can prove it. I chose to side with that proverb that says, say, so the food is on the table. All you have to do as a child is to learn to wash your hands well. And once you have learned to wash your hands well, you can join that table and eat. Now to the quintessential issues. The journey has been long, but we'll try and summarize it. So why are we here today? Why am I here this evening? Uplift, come, and the organizers of this event have one key reason or one key element underlining our being here. And it is that we must all succeed together. Please note, we must all succeed together. And if peradventure any of us fails to succeed, it will not be because those of us who have taken the lead failed to carry you along or failed to carry all of us along. So you have no reason to fail. We are coming out here to share experiences to engender you to succeed. You have no reason to fail because we are coming out in our numbers to drag you along, to pull you along, so long as you will lend us that support. The public services 
of Ghana is not a pleasant place to be if you are an upright person. In fact, working for people isn't a pleasant thing to do. There are about five or six things that has jeered me in this journey, and I'll share it briefly. The entire career story can be summarized as grace, integrity, and honesty, hard work, and sacrifice. That has been it for me. The God factor, which is grace, integrity. Now they say integrity is what you do when nobody's watching. Integrity is what you do when there are no cameras on you. Integrity is what you do when nobody is instructing you. How many of us have integrity? If I were to ask, please show by hands. Uh, we are in the presence of God. <laughs> and he's watching. How many of us can confidently say that we have integrity? Or we are honest? Well... Uh, thank you for those who were able to raise their hands. That is not to say that those who didn't raise it don't have it. Uh, perhaps we have it, but we didn't bring it, right? <laughs> or we left it at home. Uh, wherever we left it, please, let's, let's make sure we grab it. I have gone through this career transformation, perhaps at an expedited rate, because of my first element, which I call the God factor. The God factor. Again, listen, I am not saying the Christian factor. No. I am not saying the Muslim factor. No. I am not saying the religious factor. No. I am saying the God factor. What do I mean by the God factor? Learning in life and at a very tender age, Franklin here is um, a big brother of mine. We all grew up together in the same um, environment, enclave. In fact, we were the very first batch of properly educated children within our generation. As an elder brother, we looked up to them. The first time we had some of them gain admission into the university was news. In fact, those were the days when somebody gets into the university and the whole church you know, it is announced <laughs> that uh, the son of Mr. and Mrs. by the grace of God and, you know, all the accolades has made it. And at that point, it doesn't even matter what course the person is going to read. <laughs> Whether geology, zoology or whatever. I mean, once the person had made it, yeah. Our parents never made it, never got that privilege. But we were the very first batch. So coming from this background, ladies and gentlemen... We had experienced what hardship meant. We never told our story because we realized that in man, we couldn't trust. In man, we had no help. Our help was from the Lord. What, what was man going to do when we told them that our fees had not been paid? That we hadn't eaten. So we kept quiet. And for those of us who are a bit light-skinned, uh, whether you have it or not. In fact, nobody believes it when you say you don't even have it. So you are better off not even telling anybody that you don't have it because they won't believe you. So you look at where you are coming from. The unfortunate reality with majority of our youth today is that, funny enough, those of us who come from the poorest of homes are the naughtiest and the freakiest when we get to our university campuses when we get to work or when we get the least opportunities. Sometimes those from the rich homes, solid backgrounds are relaxed and cool. But those of us who come from nothing, perhaps sometimes it is as a result of uh, how deprived we've been. So when we, when we see a little rice, you know, uh, we go, we just go gaga. But let us look at that. So I just realized that the God factor was a quintessential thing in my life. As in, a very important role if I was going to make it. Now, the God factor comes across or came to me in two folds. 
One, it is either you are experiencing the presence of God in your life, or two, you are experiencing his absence in your life. Don't get it wrong. Whether you like it or not, you would experience one of these. It's either you're experiencing the presence of God in your life, or you'd experience his absence. When I say you experience the presence of God in your life, we are talking about that awakening of the mind and of the conscience that you are able to tell between right and wrong, good and evil, without any supervision. I'll proceed with this point for each and every one uh, of us to underscore. As an HR professional, as a management consultant, I'll tell you this. Almost every employer would want to employ skilled labor. True. But what every employer needs and wants above the skilled labor are men and women of integrity. You may have all the skills. You may be the Bill Gates, you may be the whoever. Employers are afraid to employ you when they realize you do not have that thing called integrity. Because if they rope you in, you are either going to turn your back on them, you are either going to steal their trade secrets, you are either going to run them bankrupt because you do not have integrity. Which reminds me of the story of Joseph. In the book of Exodus chapter 39, we are told something about the character of Joseph. Joseph is, by the way, one of my favorite Bible characters who has, to a large extent, influenced my professional career. How many of us know the story when he got to Potiphar's house? The Bible says, when Joseph arrived in Potiphar's house, Potiphar realized that the spirit of the Lord was upon his life and that he prospered in all that he did. If you read verse 4, 5, 6, and 7, it says that, and when Potiphar realized that the spirit of the Lord was on Joseph, he entrusted the entirety of his house, his household, to Joseph. Joseph was scaled. But what caused Potiphar to give him his household? Was that integrity? Was that God factor? Ladies and gentlemen, we may be scaled, we may know everything in the world, but without the God factor, we will not go far. Because we will be experiencing the absence of God in our lives. How many of us, when we read that story, get to realize that perhaps Potiphar had children? Does it, does it come across when we read that story? If Potiphar had children, where were his children? Why did he entrust everything? It was because of that integrity, that hallmark that could not be escaped. Let me also add that as youth, we must come to the realization that nobody owes us anything. Quite a number of us have a certain sense of entitlement. Thinking that our parents must pay, our uncles must pay, somebody must feed us, the government must give us jobs. If I'm to ask each and every one of us here that uh, who is the cause of our challenges in this country and in Africa, I'm sure quite an appreciable number of us would say that it is the government. True or false? Hello? Would I be right to say that? How is it the government's fault? Let's talk about integrity here again. How many of us, viewers online and those here, have paid our taxes, have filed our tax returns since January this year? Hello? How many of us who own businesses, who have made profits? When we meet in such gatherings, we tend to say we would want to profess solutions. We talk about the troubles. But let me be very honest with us. Whereas Ghana has close to 17 million Christians, Muslims in addition, 
crime rate keeps going up. We are the problems. Look, in the next one minute, even as I prepare to wrap up, I would want each and every one of us at the back of our minds to compute what percentage of Ghana's problems or Africa's problems we contribute to. How many of us are stealing from our jobs? How many of us go to work late? In fact, just last week, how many of us went to work late? Hello? Last week, I mean, just last week. How many of us went to work late? And when we even got to work late, how many of us put in extra efforts to ensure that the companies that we work for achieved the needed results? Integrity is key. Integrity is key. Let me wrap up by saying that if the God factor is with us, we do not fear what others would say or not say, for it is rather better than we, that we obey God than to obey man. The scripture says, for he knows the plans that he has for our lives, and it certainly isn't one that would lead us into shame. If there is that God factor, and you know he's the one leading the way, corruption will not be attractive to you. All those petty politics down there will not be attractive to you. You would leave that principled life. You will do what is right. And let's not forget that God would lead us where he wants to lead us, irrespective of what people say or do not say. This evening, even as we round up with all that we've had, even as we round up with the many stories that has been shared, I would want to admonish each and every one of us to believe in that God factor, to have that integrity. And it is going to be enough to push us far, not just in the church, but in our families, in our homes, in our communities. And on this note, I say thank you. Thank you very much.